Yeah, hold on, yeah. Okay, here we go. And we're on. Uh. Hello, everybody. I am so sorry for the trouble. I have to be totally honest. I have been struggling to get all the technology <laughs> together. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm so excited to present some music here uh, with my beautiful wife, Melanie Grinnell, on piano and me on bass. And uh, I'm just so thankful to uh, Southwestern College and uh, specifically uh, Sylvia Nogales for uh, thinking to, to hire us. Of course, uh, that thank you ultimately goes to uh, Derek Cannon as well. Uh, so anyways, uh, we're just going to kind of make sure that the sound is working and that stuff's going on. So we're just going to jump right into the, the first song. We're not actually going to be performing for you live right now even though we're talking live right now. Uh, we're gonna just show you some videos that we've made the last few days. See, we uh, are quarantining in our apartment and we have close neighbors. And so we try to keep the noise levels low at night. So we had to record during the normal hours of the day. Um, but I, uh, you know, it's been fun. Me and Melanie have been recording some music and we're gonna present it to you tonight. Uh, would you like to add anything before I play the first video? Oh, we, uh, yeah. Uh, good evening and thanks for being here. I think my husband already uh, said that and welcomed everybody. It's just nice to see everybody uh, on this chat and saying hello. I just wanted to give a few more moments for those folks that are still trying to switch over. So, um, and how is the sound? Can you hear us talking? Can you give us a thumbs up or some feedback in the chat? Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, without further ado, here's our first selection for the night. I'm sure many of you will recognize this. This is Duke Ellington's In a Mellow Tone. Thank you. 
Hello, everybody. Hope the sound is still working okay. Woo! Man, <laughs> the people who do this all the time, I uh, am just blown away by how people are able to do so many things at the same time. It's not a skill that comes easily to me. Anyway, so that first tune that we played for you was In a Mellow Tone, of course, written by the great Duke Ellington. Me and Melanie love playing that tune. We've been playing it for a long time together. It's kind of a nice tune to just kind of get warmed up on and and have some fun, you know, throwing some ideas back and forth. I'm sure you heard that in there, right? Um, you want to say anything else about the tune? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, anyways, so the, uh, I guess we'll just go on and we'll go on to the next tune. Um, but in the meantime, uh, maybe talk a little bit about the theme of the concert. You know, the, the concert is called uh, Jazz from Home. And... Um, you know, a lot of musicians, of course, are dealing with with a, a totally new world where uh, life uh, is, is kind of, you know, there's like a, a new life of seclusion here where everyone's communicating with each other, you know, via the, the Internet. And uh, and it and I'm sure there's a lot of musicians that have had to do what I've done and have done more than what I've done. But, you know, getting learning about how to use recording software, I'm really behind on learning how to use, you know, connect all of my audio and video and stream it. I mean, this is all really new to me, but it's been kind of fun to explore it and learn more about it. Um, but anyways, uh, for me and Melanie, our lives for the most part since March have been hanging out at home all day. Uh, both Melanie and I teach uh, and we teach, have continued to teach through Zoom. And our kids are both in a, uh, are eight and eleven, and are both doing school through Zoom as well. So we're just having a family hang, you know, in in uh, at home, and uh, for you know since March, and it's it's been actually really cool, you know. Even though I'm not going out, and Melanie's not going out all the time playing gigs, we're you know there. That's a lot of time that we've gotten to spend doing other things. Um, and one of the things that I've gotten to do a bunch more is compose. And so we're going to uh, present a few of my compositions today. Um, uh, this next tune is going to be a composition of mine. Did you want to say something? Sorry. Uh, just real quick, they're saying that the video sound is loud. And then when we switch back to this, it's they have to turn it way back up. OK, I'm not really good at this, but I'll just give us a little bit more in the microphones and see if that helps. But I'm afraid it's going to. It might pop. So we'll try. We'll see. Let me know if it if this improves it. All right. My, okay. So uh, anyways, this first tune that I'm going to show you uh, is a tune that I've just recently finished. I, I decided to call it Resisting Change. Uh, for me, uh, a lot of times tune titles come after I wrote the tune. Um, a lot of, when I went into this tune, I, you know, it just started out as a musical concept. Um, uh, maybe some of you have heard of this uh concept called pedal point if you're a music major about the idea of having a low note that stays static while a while the harmonies change above that static bass note and i kind of wanted to experiment with the idea of the bass playing a high note that stays static while the lower notes are changing um, which is kind of a normal thing i think on other instruments but on the bass i hadn't really heard it in in uh, done very much so anyways, see if you can hear that in the tune. After I wrote the whole tune, it started to take on a feeling for me. And, um, you know, that's when I came up with the title, Resisting Change. I feel like um, musically there's an element of that going on where there's a resistance to ideas changing too quickly. And uh, But also, you know, I can relate. <laughs> 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 I'm sure many of you can relate too. Uh, do you want to say anything about the tune before we before we play it? Uh, maybe after. She's so nice letting me go on and on. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, here is uh, my tune, Resisting Change. Let me get this uh, queued up. Sorry, I'm still learning how to do all this stuff. Um, okay, it's coming soon. All right, here we go. This uh, should be... Resisting change. <laughs>
Oh man. Oh, <laughs> technical problems here. Sorry, I didn't write that tune. Uh, I think uh, I I love the idea of taking credit for writing that tune, though. <laughs> well. It's a t uh, don't feel bad, Allison. Uh, great to see you on here. Uh, don't feel bad for not knowing that melody. I don't think Melanie would have known that, no. melody, that, that melody either if she didn't live with me. But yeah, that was the theme to The Mandalorian, one of my you know, new favorite uh, you know, quarantine uh, uh, binge shows. Um, I'm an old school Star Wars fan. Yeah, somebody recognized the at at. <laughs> I brought out some of my toys that I've kept. <laughs> since the 80s oh my gosh anyways of course this this guy's pretty brand new though we just got this guy for one of our kids and i stole it all right for realsies <laughs> do you have anything else you'd like to say melanie before we go in the new tune um did you already talk about writing it melanie home? told me she liked it Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. So that's a good sign. She does not usually, or I should say, she does not always tell me she likes my tunes. A lot of times she makes funny faces and, you know, looks at me sideways like, okay, if you want to, you know, do that, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she actually, I think she kind of likes this one. And uh, uh, this, yeah, this one that we're uh, about to really uh, show. Um, Often with Justin's tunes when he writes, he's not, he doesn't write, he's not prolific. He doesn't write a lot uh, compared to other composers. Um, but, you know, he'll, he'll go through periods where he'll write a lot. And it's true. Some of them are just like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but this one particularly, I was like, what is this? What is, I was just really curious as to what this was. And um, oftentimes when he writes uh, stuff, the motifs get stuck in my head and I know that it, I that's something that tells me something. It's interesting too because um, our youngest is the same way, kind of like uh, myself where if he likes one of dad's tunes, he'll just keep singing it. <laughs> so we know that this one's must be all right, must be pretty decent. So this is resisting change. All right, here we go.
Oop, sorry, I was a little slow there, but we're back. Um, I was going to say, uh, you know, one of the things that I miss about live performances, of course, is getting to interact with the audience. And um, of course, there's a lot of that happening on the chat, which I enjoy a lot. Um, but I also wanted to um, encourage you all, if you have questions about the tunes or anything like that, please uh, don't hesitate to write a question. We'll try to get back to you on the chat, or we might even talk about it live if we're, if we're, uh, if we're inspired. Um, but anyways, that was a resisting change. I don't know if you guys, how close you guys were listening, but, um, you know, for all of you out there that might be writing a concert report or something like that, you might add in there that that has, uh, an unusual time signature. Um, I don't know if you, you figured out, I know I got a lot of music friends out there that figured it out right away, I'm sure. But for those of you who maybe weren't sure, this is, that was in quintuple meter, five, four. Uh, you know, just like the great uh, uh, Take Five by Paul Desmond and uh, the Dave Brubeck Quartet. Um, anyways, thank you so much for the, the nice words about that tune. Uh, uh, you know, I write, a, I, like Melanie said, I'm not that prolific. You know, I, I, look, I look up a lot to my friends that are always writing tunes. You know, I, I think of uh, Danny Green, of course, and Peter Sprague and Nathan Hubbard. These, these guys just can, the, the music just flows out of them daily, I swear, you know, and I really feel like I have to uh, uh, work on small ideas for a long time. And uh, so when I get something that, that I actually like, that's, that's a bonus, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that just kind of goes into the back of the folder, <laughs> right? Um, did you want to say anything else about the tune before we go on to the next tune? I said enough. Maybe uh, <laughs> Melanie could say something about uh, life in quarantine. I already said a bunch of stuff about her family. Did you want to add anything to that? Like, well, she's she's being shy, but Melanie teaches full time at Grossmont College, of course, and she's the director of piano studies, and uh, and. She, because she's full time, she has to spend a lot of time teaching classes on Zoom, and she's had probably, you know, she's had to learn all this new technology, like all of us uh, music teachers out there, like, uh, you know, how to get good sounding audio into the into the machine and somehow get it out to the students and somehow communicate with them. So, you know, uh, she's been, you know, kicking butt doing that, and she keeps. You know, sorry, I've kind of spied on some of her students, that, but her students are doing amazing stuff. Anything else you'd like to say? No, I just do want to acknowledge um, there are some other uh, music teachers, professors, and actually from Southwestern College, I want to give a shout out, of course, to Sylvia Nogales again for having us. Um, we actually, talking about the quarantine, this is something we've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, like, okay, we're home now. We're, we can't go anywhere. Um, so let's do this and do a duo and start, uh, you know, posting these things online and going virtual. But, uh, we didn't do anything in any of that until <laughs> Sylvia called and said, do you want to do a concert? And we're like, yes. So thank you so much, Sylvia. Shout out to you. And I want to just thank some of the faculty that are here from Southwestern College, Dr. Terry Russell, Dr. Jorge Pastrana. Um, I think I saw some other, oh, I saw Tracy Berklin up there as well. Um, and then just a shout out again to our San Diego uh uh, friends that are all here um, thank you so much for the support always um, and then there's also some folks that we don't get to see very often some folks from the Bay Area um, family is here too and even um, um, students as well from Grossmont College thank you so, so much and those that have gone to transfer over too I think I saw Andy Galligan in the chat somewhere there I hope you're doing well at state and staying safe um, and then I also want to give a shout out to a past life of mine at when I used to work on the cruise ships I think is Bill McCrone still there I think I saw him on there uh, a fellow bass player uh, checking out Justin <laughs> so anyway it's been it's been a minute um it's been over 25 years so 
I'm sure we all still look the same, right, Bill? So anyway, without further ado, let's go on to the next tune. All right. I guess I'll do a little bit of a shout out too. I, I saw some of my my family from uh, Northern California uh, on here. I know my mom is on there. I think that's okay. And uh, I saw Micah of the Wicker Shams. So I and I'm hoping we're connecting with all the Wicker Shams too. So cool to see you here, uh, my friend Tyson. Uh, old uh, friend from high school, Matt Cousins, uh, uh, old uh, friend of mine from Santa Rosa too, who I, who uh, I, you know, hired me to play in Tin Circus, which was a big deal for me at the time, get to play in a ska band that was already performing all over the county. And uh, that was really awesome to, to be part of that. And, you know, got to get our, I got to know Matt Cousins better then. And that was, that's awesome. Uh, who else am I forgetting? Uh, of course, shout out to San Diego musicians, Southwestern College, Grossmont College faculty. I don't want to forget anybody. It's so hard not to forget somebody. <laughs> um, what else? Anyways, I guess we'll go on to a tune and I'll collect my thoughts. Uh, this next tune is uh, by uh, uh, one of one of my favorite pianists. I assume one of Melanie's favorites too, uh, the great Keith Jarrett. This is a tune called Country, and this is from. Uh, one of our favorite albums, um, and I'm sure many of your favorite albums too, the album's called My Song. And there's a bunch of hits on that record. Of course, My Song is a beautiful melody, and um, Questar is just... Uh, Iconic. Yeah, just such an amazing melody. Love that tune. Anyways, I, I, I fought, fell in love with this tune, Country, and, and uh, I, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I think it's a great title. Here we go. Here is country.
All right, everybody. So that was Country. That was a beautiful melody written by Keith Jarrett, one of my favorite uh, composers and pianists. Uh, just an un unbelievable musician. Uh, and he, he's one of those people I think of, you know, like, you know, we like me and Melanie were just having a conversation about this, how like a lot of musicians, uh, you know, practice really hard and they get up to like this 90th percentile well maybe not everybody but you know some people <laughs> get up that 90th percentile sometimes i'd like to think i'm somewhere up there in the high 80 90th percentile um but then it's like it gets exponentially harder to to move up to 91 92 98 99 and keith jarrett it's just one of those people he's way up there uh hard to touch you know one of the one of the all-time greats uh, do you want to say anything else about that tune before we go on, go on, even for maybe the concert report people or me? All right. Um, all right. Well, then I guess we'll go on. We're going to go on to another composition of mine. Um, this one's called Uphill Battle. And uh, just like the other tune, this one's brand new. It's been written. It was written uh, in my garage on Melanie's keyboard. and uh, His office. My office. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And uh, so I've spent a lot of time in the garage because I made it my <laughs> office. And uh, yeah, I, and the keyboard is the only instrument that I can like, you know, put those headphones on and play at all times uh, in the evening. And uh, so I, I cranked out a couple tunes and, and this was one of them, Uphill Battle. And again, uh, I didn't name this tune until I was finished. You know, part of it, part of the title, of course, is related to the musical material. I think if you listen closely, there's a lot of kind of rising going on with with the with the chords. I like to think of them as like maybe steps. You know, I don't know. I hear them as like steps, but not like actual like stairs, but like more uh, figurative steps, like in life. You know, um, so and uh, but I but of course you know the title I think also appeals to kind of a feeling or an emotion that I get from the song after I complete it. Um, so, but I don't want to say too much. I'll let you, uh, you know, kind of make your own meaning out of the song if you like it. So this is Uphill Battle. Do you, do you want to add anything about it or? I think you'll notice also just, just to say a quick thing about jazz in general, for those of you who may not uh, listen to a lot of jazz or, um, or have to write a concert report or something like that. Um, you know, uh, these tunes that I've written, Resisting Change and Uphill Battle, of course, are not, they don't sound like traditional jazz pieces. You know, obviously you don't hear them and think Louis Armstrong or Duke Ellington or, or something like that. Um, uh, so, but I just kind of want to maybe put it out there that, that jazz is, is a, a very very wide ranging and inclusive term to a lot of people at least it is for me and um, in in some ways you could say maybe that uh, uh, makes it, or it kind of makes the meaning of jazz jazz kind of smaller you know or sorry I'm just having trouble finding the right words the, you know the more inclusive you are with the with the definition of course the meaning starts to have less specific meaning i mean just by definition there right so um but you know so some people want jazz to be a very specific thing in terms of you know having improvisation or having a swing feel and stuff like that um i'm i'm not in that camp so to say i i understand that argument and 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 i think it's important to talk about it um but i like also thinking that jazz can be very inclusive and um be an ever-evolving language that's bringing in other influences and styles. So, and and I think with my tune here, as I've gone on and on and on about already, uh, uphill battle. You know, I'm bringing in some other influences, and a lot of times I didn't even realize what what they are until I'm kind of in the middle of it. You know, so hope you enjoy it. Um, and uh, without further ado, uphill battle. All right, let me get it set up. Sorry, I am just. Uh, Again, totally just figuring out how to use all this stuff.
All right, here we go. Uphill battle.
right. That was Uphill Battle. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, thank you for some nice compliments out there, too. <laughs> um, you know, these tunes uh, that I've written, uh, you know, when I write them on the piano, it's me playing the piano. And, uh, it, you know, I can kind of get through the chords a little bit. Um, but major, major shout out here to Melanie. <laughs> For filling it, filling them out, and making them sound uh, better than I did in my head, you know. Sometimes uh, I give her a hard time for for maybe missing a, a little thing here and there because I'm, you know, I'm critical. It's my art, you know. But uh, but she always, she always blows it out of the water, and uh, so I hope you're enjoying listening to Melanie Grinnell on the piano. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, Anyways, I, I haven't seen too many comments about sound and video. I hope things are going okay. Maybe a little comment here and there might help. Of course, it's always going to sound better if you're going through headphones or uh, you know, if you're connected directly to your, your modem or whatever. Um, of course, that's always going to be better. But, um, you know, let me know. I'd be interested to hear what, what you guys are hearing out there. Um, anyway, so uh, that was Uphill Battle. The next tune we're going to do is... Uh, uh, an old jazz standard uh, uh, made famous by Disney. <laughs> from uh, Originally, this song came from uh, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, but a couple of jazz musicians, I, I'm not sure who the first jazz musician was, but jazz musicians quickly adopted this tune, uh, and it became a jazz standard. Um, probably the most famous recording I know of uh, was by uh, Miles Davis, of course, and he named the album after this track someday my prince will come and i actually was doing a little bit of research on this this may be a little bit too wikipedia for all you all out there but i'm addicted to wikipedia so i'll just give you a quick little blurb here i looked this guy the composer up his name's frank churchill and he happened to be the pianist and composer for uh for snow white and the seven dwarfs but he also contributed most of the music for dumbo and bambi but what was kind of crazy is I found out he actually committed suicide at the piano. Oh. I mean, it's really, really dark. I'm going to read about it some more. It sounds very tragic, like a lot of musicians' <laughs> stories. Um, but uh, I hate to bring up so something so dark, but uh, I, I think maybe the most important thing here is just this, this beautiful tune that he wrote. Someday my prince will come, the great jazz standard, and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, me's, me's, Melanie and I, eyes. Our. <laughs> yeah. Our, what? Our rendition. Enjoy.
supporters and sisters. All right. Someday my prince will come. Yeah. One of my favorite waltzes, of course, uh, my sister commented that she loves, loves that tune too. I think maybe it's just in our family. We love waltzes. I just cannot get enough waltzes in my life. Um, <laughs> so someday my prince will come. Uh, yeah. Or for the non-musicians out there, waltz basically just means that it's in, the music is in triple meter, which means you count the music in groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we're we're getting near the end here. We're gonna do another uh, original of mine. We're gonna do um, this new tune that I wrote again during quarantine. This one's called the Challenger, and uh, this one's a twelve bar blues. Um, again, I wrote it, you know, and then came up with the title later. Um, most of these tunes too are you know, very loosely related to stuff that's going on in the world too, or stuff that I'm watching. Of course, I've been watching too much stuff on TV and, uh, who's been Netflix binging. Yeah. I, I've been <laughs> binging everything. Uh, but anyways, um, you know, and all these titles, you know, you, you might even say have some kind of political and, uh, social, uh, commentary that go with them too but uh, you know I, I like leaving it up to, to you all to, to come up with your own way to relate to the music um, but I guess the challenger you know uh, I can be real maybe a little bit more specific um, I watched the, the documentary about the challenger crash and um, the shuttle crash and uh, I thought it was a great documentary I, I would recommend it um, and I didn't really I guess I kind of titled the tune not so much in uh, in honor somehow of, of the astronauts, although I think it, it, that's fine, I, and I, I, I would like to honor them. I think they were, um, uh, were obviously amazing people, and you learn a lot about them in, in the documentary. But what's, what's also kind of, you know, tragic and depressing about that particular documentary is just you know, is, you know, tw you know, here's the thing, tw you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. here we are in 2020. But, uh, you know, the, they know, obviously, why it crashed, and they kind of can, uh, you know, they could look back at all the steps that kind of led to that happening. And, um, but, but I think of like the challenger. Now, like, when I think of the title of this tune, I think of that as the person that can see that stuff happening, can see stuff that may lead to problems down the line and decides maybe not to let it keep happening. Like it's the first, the challenger is that person that comes out and says, I don't think you realize that this, this, and this, and this could happen if you don't change what you're doing now. So that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, what I'm hoping for, you know, for, for, from people. And I, of course, hope for that mostly for myself you know I, I would I, I hope that uh, when I see a problem and, it, and it's leading a day a day down a dangerous path that I'll, I'll, I'll make the right action uh, but anyways this is a, a t the tune the challenger and uh, it's it's really a blues and it's got some uh, some energy behind it. I hope you enjoy it um, so without further ado here we go sorry I got to get it up I should have got it up already uh, where is it here all right here we go I didn't write that tune. Yeah, we were just having some fun. We're going to play the Challenger next, but I wanted you to get a little bit more of that Mandalorian theme. Hope you enjoyed hearing that in a couple different uh, 
uh, grooves. You know, we played it kind of the normal way up front, and then we did a little bit of a, of a cutesy uh, swing kind of, uh, I don't know, like kind of stride thing a little bit, and, and then we just kind of did it as a bossa for fun. Who knows? Maybe I'll start doing this at all my concerts, just try to play the Mandalorian in like, you know, maybe next time we'll do reggae and maybe we can do salsa. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what's up. But anyways, uh, the Challenger is going to be our last tune for, for this concert. Um, we are so thankful to all of you for hanging out with us. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the music. And uh, um, and for all of, the, of you out there that are listening to this in the future, maybe, streaming it on your own time, uh, thanks for hanging out too. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun, and and it's it's been really uh, a learning experience for me to to figure out how to present music in this way. Um, and I am just so thankful to uh, Southwestern College and Sylvia for bringing us on board to do this. And of course, I can't emphasize enough uh, how thankful and happy I am to have Melanie uh, to help me uh, make music. Uh, for my life <laughs> yeah do you, do you want to add anything before we go no just thank you so much for the opportunity and the support uh everybody not just tonight but but always and just uh we hope and wish you well be safe and thanks for supporting this is our last tune all right here we go the challenger
That's a Christmas. All right, everybody. We got we talked our kids into coming down and joining us to say goodbye to everybody. Here we have Brady and we have Owen. <laughs> but thank you so much for uh, spending the evening with us and I, I hope you enjoyed the music. And of course, uh, we all want to wish you what? What do we want to wish them? Happy holidays. What, Brady? <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs> all right, everybody have a, have a good night. And I uh, hope to see you out there in the real world. Thank you, everybody.